a new update is on the horizon for rise of kingdoms and by the looks of it you can say goodbye to your epic equipment this does not sound good for free to play players so today we're gonna talk about it what's going on guys cheers i just woke up made coffee and i saw this went live and i'm like oh my god i feel like i don't usually cover these updates that often but this one feels important okay so the chorus of tides event is coming and it looks like the isle of marvels event is going to be sort of like a copy and paste of previous events that we've seen seven days of questing it's an alliance themed event that's going to give you access to a ton of prizes and apparently a city theme the protect the supplies event is coming back honestly i don't think i've ever heard someone say they like that event everyone just does it because they feel like they have to tempest clash is coming back nobody cares about that either so again this is just sort of copy and paste and what we would expect from a sort of late summer uh holiday event i guess and that's fine i think the holiday events are generally good because they give you a lot of free rewards and it keeps things interesting gives you something to do in the game that is solid even if it is pretty similar just a reskin of previous stuff we've sort of come to expect that at this point the second thing here is improvements improvements to season of conquest i like how they use the word improvements without even waiting to see if the community likes it like they're just telling you it's going to be better when it's like hang on hold up how do you know we're going to think it's an improvement we haven't even seen it yet anyway improvements to the crystal technology we've increased the number of crystals dropped by defeating kahar the hidden in all season of conquest stories okay this is solid i think that what they're probably going to do here because they're removing the plunder technology they're basically just lifting up the rewards you get from kahar across the board i think that is fine the plunder technology is now going to say increases crystals earned from defeating barbarian patrols and barbarian forts in lost kingdom i think this is a good piece of technology how many crystals it increases it by is yet to be known but hopefully it's a meaningful amount so that way free to play players can get some sort of value here the first aid technology is being removed we already heard about this in the past but this is basically the uh, technology that would reduce the amount of sev wounds you got from defeating barbs in the lost kingdom that is fine I guess and then they've added some new technologies okay so Karaku's gift increases the acquisition speed of crystals during the trial of the Ko Karak event now when I first read that I was very confused I was like what do you mean speed uh but then down here we're gonna take a look at actually the Ko Karak event this will make a lot more sense in just a second and then they've also added the surprise strike which increases damage dealt to enemy garrisons and rallied armies while you're on the map in the Lost Kingdom we've also talked about this before I think this is going to make it uh even more likely that your garrison gets swarmed down so this is definitely going to change the meta and it's definitely going to change how you operate in, in in kvk and in war very interesting stuff i can't wait to see what this looks like is this going to be five percent all damage is it going to be 20 percent all damage how is this going to go i'm very curious they've also fine-tuned the unlock order for crystal technology that's going to be really interesting to see how they rearrange different things i imagine this isn't going to be a huge change i think they're probably just going to shift around a few of the technologies that they've already said that they're adding and removing next let's talk about the heroic anthem power-up changes so this is the kvk that we just won and i gotta say the blockade feature was very lukewarm if you're dominating the open field it's a great feature you love it if you're losing the open field then it's frustrating and you hate it so generally I wasn't a fan of the blockade feature it just doesn't feel good to lose control of your own troops however it looks like they've added new combat tactics that will give you different buffs for your armies so this is really interesting they've also added a new layer of five combat tactics so there's melee ranged guerrilla rally and garrison uh, and you can only choose one set at a time and they can't be changed once they've left your city so this is really interesting it feels like melee is sort of what we would expect and what we're used to range is probably just like uh, the arrow towers or like range damage in tempest clash or something we already know what rally and garrison are we don't know what gorilla is to me this seems a little bit confusing okay when i was in the heroic anthem power up game mode there was a ton of confusion as to what is the difference between peaceful and aggressive mode how does blockade features work I think the heroic anthem power-up game mode was already very confusing for casual players adding 
five new combat tactics on top of all those things I know it doesn't sound like a big deal and because we're watching YouTube videos we're very invested in this game and so we're committed to learning all these changes most players aren't uh and what this is probably going to lead to is just a decrease in engagement from the casual players which is definitely unfortunate and certainly not what we want in the game right just less Alliance members logging in and fighting is like not what you want in a war game but the jury is out on this change um I personally at first glance think it looks confusing and and I think most casual players are going to find it confusing, but it could be very straightforward. It could be very useful. Some of the buffs could be very powerful and very good. The other thing that I'm worried about here is that, you know, if you're all piling into a pass or a flag or a fort or something like that, and the garrison captain that you want in the flag isn't there, well, then you can sometimes like emergency put in like a backup garrison. But in this instance, what if that player didn't choose the garrison combat tactic and they instead chose chose like the main the melee combat tactic when they left their city, thinking that they wouldn't have to be the garrison commander or captain. Um, and now they they are in a pinch. I feel like that's going to be a huge disadvantage and you're really caught off guard there. So I don't know. I have concerns about this, but again, I'm, I, I guess I should be less negative and just wait and see how it, how it looks in the game. They've also added a new rally mode, aggressive rally troops departing from aggressive rallies will automatically attack any enemy troops that blockade their march route as their blockade mode is automatically set to aggressive mode by default. So this was a big deal. Uh, basically if somebody launched a rally and it got blockaded, then they would cancel the rally and essentially the armies in the rally would break open and they'll run out but they couldn't go anywhere because they were surrounded by blockades which is another reason why the blockade feature is very stupid but basically what this is saying is that if you launch an aggressive rally it's automatically going to make them aggressive so they start to fight back I guess what I don't understand is is the rally going to be aggressive as well because it says troops departing from aggressive rallies will automatically attack this doesn't say that the rally is going to automatically attack those that are in the blockade that's what i'm really curious about i would think that that would be the case because it's very stupid to be able to block a rally with like a single tier one unit right like the rally can't move if there's a single tier one cavalry in front of it which is very stupid so i'm hoping that rallies will be able to like sort of trample through stuff as well um i don't really know how that's gonna work but regardless we'll have to wait and see next we can look at improvements look they use that word again it's an assumption they're assuming that they're improving the game we'll tell you if it's an, an improvement or not how about that okay just say changes just say changes and then we'll decide so anyway improvements <laughs> to the trial of Kokar Archivent. great news you're getting less crystals that's an improvement I uh, we already told you it is okay I'm being facetious anyway we've added a limit to the maximum number of attacks possible against trial targets for each level one attack is spent every time you send a new troop to attack the target once you have used all of your attacks you cannot send any new troops to attack the target so this is clearly an attempt at um preventing players from having their army get defeated and then sending out another one and having that be defeated and sending out another one and just constantly being engaged with that uh with that trial target and being able to defeat higher levels than they otherwise would be able to do generally speaking I think this is strictly a nerf on free-to-play players um as somebody who is t5 with a bunch of legendaries and I had a decent amount of the technology done um there was only a few instances where I had to resend out a few different uh armies near the very end of the hardest difficulty so really this isn't going to affect players like me it's going to affect players that relied on sending multiple armies to actually progress through this event and that's uh, really unfortunate the trial of the co event when it first came out was very good for free-to-play players this seems like a direct it directly impacts how free-to-play players can perform in this event which is just bad bullet point two we've replaced some of the mid-level Karaku warriors okay I don't know what that means I don't know if that means they're gonna get buffed nerfed or if they're just gonna have different skills not sure bullet point three we've added a new cumulative reward in the trial of the Kokarok event and modified the original challenge reward for completing the trial apart from the current challenge reward the event now offers a crystal reward that governors can accumulate over time the higher challenge level conquered than the more crystals earned per hour so it sounds like this is going to work just like the crystal production mine however it is saying that they've said that it's apart from the current challenge reward so it sounds like it's on top of that current challenge reward so I mean look if this if this generally gives you more crystals overall I would say that that's good so long as this first bullet point doesn't prevent the people who need it most from getting access to those crystals also accumulation over time isn't as useful as 
instantly gaining a large number number of crystals especially in the beginning of kvk because having a lot of progress earlier in the kvk makes a difference for pass four opening and some of the most important fights early on and sometimes um if you get crushed in those early fights then kvk is pretty much over for you guys so i don't know i don't love the idea that you can like as a free-to-play player max out crystal tech on the last day of kvk like that's who cares right but again we're gonna have to wait and see is this actually an improvement or is this actually just a change i don't know um i mentioned when this event first came out that i thought the rewards were pretty solid and i said that i really didn't want them to change it and this is going to be the second time since recording that video that they're changing it so it's like i don't get why they would get positive feedback on something and then be so adamant at changing it I, again i don't know we gotta wait and see how this is going to affect um players if it's going to be a significant increase in crystals that you get it could be good i really have no clue but i am generally uh not optimistic i wouldn't say i'm pessimistic but i'm certainly not optimistic at the direction that this change sounds like it's making new legendary chests we're closing the legendary tavern event but this will not affect any legendary tavern events currently in progress we've added a new legendary chest of the tavern which can be opened with sovereign keys or directly with gems to recruit even more powerful commanders so essentially what it sounds like is they're just taking the legendary tavern event and just implementing it permanently into the season of conquest kingdoms and honestly i think that this is solid um i always wondered why the legendary tavern event was time sensitive no idea uh it sounds like we might be getting more commanders in this chest as well um it says even more powerful commanders so it may be possible that we're they're adding commanders to this to this uh legendary chest which is generally good if you're a new player and you're a whale this is generally going to be good for you because you're going to be able to just immediately spend on this event right away so I, I guess that's cool the downside here is that for this event the legendary tavern tavern event if you opened 200 keys you were guaranteed 10 sculptures of a, of a particular legendary and so what a lot of people did and especially free-to-play players is they would save up until they had until they could guarantee that they could open 200 for this event and then they would guarantee that they would get for example a mightiest governor commander that they might not have gotten access to before which i thought was very cool here you know this is just generally implemented into the tavern i feel like that the 200 key reward is probably going to go away um however this could open the door for like let's say a new achievement in the game right there's already an achievement that rewards you for hoarding 200 gold keys and opening them all at once perhaps they will reward you for hoarding 200 sovereign keys and opening them up all at once I hope that's not the case because I really hate to save these I always want to use them right away but we'll have to wait and see this improvement this number bullet point five is very important and I'm very happy to see this it says we've added a highlight selected target option in settings enabling it will turn the avatars of other troops transparent when selecting a target target unit but troop avatar transparency will not be affected when selecting your own units this is very good this is a huge deal in murder balls because a lot of times when you're fighting you choose a target you're fighting and you see all your armies are in combat but you don't know if all those armies are in combat with the target that you picked or they're just being attacked in the open field so having this show you which target army you're hitting is going to be super important and it will help you decide if you want to retreat from that army or not because if the target that you're hitting is actually running away and towards enemy territory and now you're moving through the murder ball you have no idea where your armies are and then all of a sudden you end up somewhere too deep into territory so this is very good we've needed this for a very long time and I'm happy to see that this is coming into the game so good change Lilith thank you I hope that this works as I expected to but bullet point number two here is what's going to kill free to play players okay and this is I, I actually don't think I'm being dramatic here I do think that this is a very big deal um added new champion achievements involving equipment commanders city themes crystals and legendary chests there are 12 equipment related achievements complete them to receive iconic crystals as a reward each equipment related achievement grants one iconic crystal so what this means is that there are now 12 iconic crystals flooding the market presumably only for players who have achieved a certain level of equipment now when you look at some of the achievements that are that are already in the game and if you guys didn't know this is what they're talking about they're going to be adding a new uh, achievement tier apparently unlock saladin's expertise constantine's expertise mehmed's expertise these are all achievements that free-to-play players are going to have an extremely hard time getting access to so when i look at this uh, update coming into the game and they say oh we're adding achievements for equipment 
they probably don't mean that the achievement is going to be own a green set of equipment and we'll give you an iconic crystal highly doubt it okay if there's only 12 equipment related achievements you bet it's going to be like craft your first legendary piece craft your second legendary piece own a full set of legendary equipment own a talented piece of legendary equipment these achievements in general are probably going to be quite difficult to obtain and i think especially for free to play players now if the achievements are own one piece of legendary equipment okay fine that's that's fine it's achievable by free to play and that's generally good and you know if you're getting iconic crystals you can only use them on legendaries anyway so it is what it is but I do think that even if half of these um achievements are relatively easy to obtain from free to, free to play players that means that there's still going to be six additional iconic crystals that they won't have access to that the whales will and that's being generous right i don't think that there's going to be six of these achievements easy to obtain by free to play players however if you look at a player like baba for example he's probably going to automatically be able to unlock all 12 of these achievements right away which means he's immediately going to have 12 more iconic crystals that he can put into his already powerful equipment so essentially what this is doing by adding all of these new iconic crystals to the quote unquote marketplace is that now you're just going to increase the probability that you're going to go up against a whale with fully iconic equipment and i think that that's a huge deal if you want to be competitive in this game now look okay a free-to-play player with full epic equipment was never going to compete with a, a well with full legendary equipment as it stands okay it was already the case however you could easily make the case that there were some pieces of epic equipment that were worth having over a legendary right here you can see i'm using the gladiator legs because the legendary legs that give you health only give you like two percent more health and it's a lot you know when you're looking at what pieces to to focus on this just isn't isn't a piece that you really care too much to change same thing with like the weapon here okay you're getting 17 percent extra defense that's great but if it goes up a set like this and i just instantly get 12 more iconic crystals and now this entire set is giving me all these extra base points it's going to further increase the gap between free to play and heavy spending whales i would argue that that gap was already really large but at least we had the ability to use an epic set again even like something like this this is uh i only replaced two pieces here and i feel like the rest of the set's actually pretty good but now if all i go up against are whales with fully iconic equipment it, it's gg okay it's gg this is no longer even sort of competitive it's completely outranked and there's nothing you can do about this other than forge more legendary equipment which great news if you're a free-to-play player you can't forge more of it it's just so hard it takes so long for free-to-play players to do this and just to be clear a lot of people predicted this when iconic crystals came into the game people were saying oh my god this makes epic equipment obsolete and it's no longer competitive and that's true however because it was it took so long to get a single iconic crystal um that there weren't that many players with a ton of iconic crystals which is generally a good thing so we haven't experienced the effect of epic equipment becoming obsolete until this event comes out and immediately gives whales 12 pieces of iconic equipment now I should say I could be wrong here okay these 12 equipment related achievements maybe they're really easy to complete maybe they're really easy but let's be honest I don't think that's the case I know deep down you know that that's not going to be the case and based on Lilith's bottom line it's probably not in their best interest to make this easy either so that way people spend more money so mark my words the probability that epic equipment is obsolete has just gone through the roof it's very likely that using epic equipment is no longer going to be as competitive as it was a few months ago and uh yeah what that means is that you're going to start to use less armies in the open field so if you had you know four or five armies that had decent equipment with some epics mixed in there you're going to want to reduce that down to three or two armies that have just mostly legendary equipment um because that's going to be the only way that you can get decent trades if this is going to function the way that i think it will and i'm very disappointed to see this i don't think uh i don't think iconic crystals should be 
as abundant as this uh and um generally just negative just generally a, a huge 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 l for the free to play community and honestly if you guys are unhappy about this as i am you can click here to give them feedback i've already done this i've already given them my negative feedback uh, because sometimes this green button goes away so make sure you do this as soon as possible anyway let's finish this uh, update here we've improved the verification code systems so of governors with good conduct scores can minimize the number of verification codes needed this is good generally every time i send an army to the pit uh to the alliance pit i have to do a verification code which is just so stupid it's so annoying i've never used a bot on my account before so yeah the fact that i should theoretically have to do that less is a good thing um, number four we've decided to limit governors access to each other's details as it has come to our attention that certain governors information is at risk of being used for unapproved purposes which could negatively impact on the gaming experience this i actually find problematic um first of all this sort of seems like a response to rockboard.com and also my videos covering the most powerful players uh maybe that's just i'm being an ego andy here but this the timing of this seems odd right it seems to me like they don't like the fact that you can go into other kingdoms and look at certain governor information or data however i would argue that having access to more data is good for the game if you're going into kvk for example and somebody teleports next to you it's important to know how much power they have how many kills they have etc right now this doesn't specify what information they're going to make unavailable but i honestly can't think of any information on your governor profile that would negatively impact the gaming experience like unless you have private information on your public photo album which in that case that's your fault not anyone else's it's a public photo album but in general the more information that we have players have the better it helps us decide who should migrate into our kingdom and who shouldn't it helps us reward the players that are active in our kingdom and those who are slacking so in general uh I think this is actually a pretty big negative if I'm being honest with you guys I guess we'll have to wait and see as to what information they limit and how they limit it but I like how they used unapproved purposes what what the f looking at a looking at numbers is unapproved you're not allowed to look at numbers even though these numbers are publicly available and they have no impact on the game whatsoever you're not allowed to look at them why do I need approval to look at a player's account what the fuck what are you my parents Lilith also where is there a list of approved uses of other player information there isn't one this is bullshit they just aren't happy with with how people are looking at other people's accounts I guess I don't know point four is all bullshit I don't understand this at all nobody cares about this 99.99 percent of players don't even know that you can look at other players accounts or how it could be negatively impactful so at the end of the day I don't understand this whatsoever point five we've added a new list mode for the data special offer oh great news it's easier to buy the stuff you want to buy let's go oh wow dude yes purchasing stuff is easier because it was so hard before yes dude I like how they added that right at the end of this entire thing like oh sweetie you can spend your money easier now it's 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 good we've optimized the quality of some avatar frames and name plaques okay great Osiris League season six is coming soon very cool overall I think this update is lukewarm at best and bad at worst so um I encourage you guys to submit your feedback how you feel don't just do what I say look at this objectively for you as a player and decide do you think this looks good or bad and then give them feedback it's important to give them feedback if you think that this update is going to be good give them positive feedback okay but if you think this update is going to be negative give them negative feedback that's what they want they're asking for your feedback they're literally asking for it okay and you have the power to make the game better if you give them the feedback that you think is accurate so go ahead and do it with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.